All right, traders, today we have a very special video for you as Bao comes back with a new daily recap. It is December 2nd, 2019. Today he talks about AKTX, ASLN, BIMI, CANF, CLVS, HEPA, and ORMP. First day back from Thanksgiving break, everyone is eager to trade. How to keep your discipline in check and make money with the least amount of stress. Also, we put together a free two-hour webinar for everyone open to the public. Register now and reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. That's .co. Limited spaces available. All right, guys. Welcome to the Daily Recap. It's December 2nd, 2019. 11, 17, 18 market time. I'm going to mute you, Alex. Um, it's been a while since we did the Daily Recap, so... Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome back. Today was actually very hard to wake up. <laughs> I, I mean, can you imagine eating all the food during the holidays? We're, we're off for, for like four days, five days, and then you have to get back to work. So how do you get back to work, guys? You have to just, just go back to your process. Uh, the process begins before you even sit down on, this, on your desk, right? Um, so it started last night. Last night, what I did was I ate well, I exercised, and I went to bed very early. I got I, I got into bed at 9 p.m. By 10, I passed the hell out, and then uh, I woke up. You know, we maintain my form, my routine. It's like a golfer. I keep telling everybody, trading is very much uh, routine and process based. You have to get into a routine. Like golfers, that's why you see golfers get into their stance and they do what they need to do. Same thing with NBA players. They, when they do a free throw, they, they have their routine because they're doing it over and over and over and over. And so it becomes second nature, it becomes a reflex. And I call that trading like a reflex, but, but pretty much it's a, it's a process. It's a routine that you, you do over and over and over until you, you know, it becomes second nature to you. Um, the moment I deviate from my process, in any fashion, that's when I, I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? I'm going to make sure on the fly up. And so the process, once again, begins the day before you've been trained. It starts before you begin to your desk. If you're, if you're waking up late, you're fucked. Whenever I wake up late, I panic. I don't have time to do my research. I don't have time to do anything. So process is very important. Uh, look at Alex. He's cooking now. So what you see on the screen now, um, uh, we were adding a webcam. So, so here's Alex. <laughs> So keep your clothes on, Alex. <laughs> um, so before I start, I want to talk about the zombie rule and why the zombie rule is so important. So CLVS, we'll start with this stock, CLVS. This stock, I actually didn't trade. That's because it got restricted at one of my brokers. And when I went to another broker, it was like 20 something cents a share. And I was just like, I was too late. I was like, screw it. And it was already, you know, I was like, you know what? I, it's my first day back. I took Friday off. So I haven't worked since Wednesday of last week. So it's been almost a week. So I'm kind of rusty. I, I have not really done research on CLVS. So I said, instead of trying to tackle this, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to mess around with it because I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, when you feel uncomfortable with the stock, you don't have to trade every stock that, that, that moves, guys. You do not have to trade every stock that moves. You, you stick to your bread and butter, you do your niche or whatever, and you can learn. So what I'm learning about CLVS is this. CLVS, let me take a look at the stock. And we talked about this many, many times. It's been up almost 10 days straight. Forget the three-day rule. It's just walking up like crazy. You go, you will go bankrupt before any of this thing goes down. So when you see a stock like this, I tell everybody, even says on Wednesday, last week, last week I said, the best way to trade a stock like CLVS is to wait for the first red day. When that stock makes the first red move, that's when you can pound it. Okay. Until then, let it do its thing. Do not cherry pick this stock. You know, this is all front side. Wait for the backside. Let it exhaust itself. This stock here walked up for almost 10 days from $7, $6 to <clears throat> 17 plus, right? So let's go back to three days on this. And so you notice uh, during pre-market, I told you guys the same exact thing. Look for the, wait for the red. Wait for the first day red. Don't fucking fuck around. And so let it do its pre-market thing. So let's actually take a look at this, okay? 
I'm going to put CLVS into a, uh, this is a two day. And so let me turn to one day, intraday. The market opens at 930 and it did this thing. It ran up, it, it just fucking triggered all the stops and it started taking down. It's still not ready today. It closed at 1493. So what happens is this. So you can do a couple of things. You can start drawing your lines of support, right? So you're like, you know what, man, this thing is way over view up. And so where would you short? If you wanted to really short something like this, you wait for it to drop under the last major support. In this case, around the $15.50 to $15 to this line. You see what I'm saying? That, that is the, the last major support. And that's the same thing from Friday. So there, here's actually a pivot line. So you can do a couple of things. You can get into a little bit early and then stop out if you want, you know, but the key is, do you feel it's going to go red? And so the red is 1493. So if you want it to be really, really safe, you would short it underneath this and it went down to 14 bucks. You would just made a buck, save money or what 50 cents or 25 cents, whatever the heck you want to make it done. Right. There's a lot of good traders like, Hey, congrats, Joe. Um, let me see. Let me let me bring this on to show everybody what Joe did. I want to read what he did. So good job, Joe. What I'm going to do is uh. So let me do this, Joe. Let me then bring you on. I am going to unmute you, Joe. Oh, you have a mic. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey, man. Talk about your trade. Sorry. Can you? Is my is mine clear or no? Yeah, I just got to talk a little louder. Yeah, sorry, my uh, laptop is closed. Let me open it here so the mic gets muffled. So everyone can read what Joe did. Go ahead, Joe. I'm gonna wait for you. No big deal. Mic better now. Yeah, I want to show. Uh, talk about the mindset and where you entered and why you entered there and exited, etc. So yeah, it was. Um, <coughs> When, when I saw the chart, it was very much, it was very different from, from prior days. So if you guys look at the daily chart on CLVS and you notice the clear difference between today and the remaining days is there was a very large gap up today. I think it gapped up like six and a half percent or something like that. And then you had the big morning push, which if you look at the prior days was a very, very different setup than price action from everything else in the prior. So if you look at Bow's chart, look at the opening prices on the prior day. See, it grinds at the open and then it breaks that morning high and it continues higher. It continues to grind higher. So right there at the open, you can see that $13 level on his chart and you can see that it grinds higher. So today when it gaps up a lot, that to me is, um, what I call basically price exhaustion. The, 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 the chart was exhausting itself. So really all I waited for was the volatility to finish. And I was like, and Sam said it too, me and Sam were in a, in a chat together and he goes, bro, a new low of the day. And this thing is toast. It's going red. I'm like, yeah, bro, 1550. That's my line. Like when it breaks that I, and I go call me crazy because we don't really say death line in large caps or even mid caps because man, there's no true death line in those charts. It's not like a small cap company and they don't have to stop. And, and uh, so Bow said it right. He said major support. And I always mix that up. I always will say death line, but it actually is, it's true. Bow said it right. It's major support. So 1550 to me was a major support crack. It had a new low of the day, major support. And again, I waited for that five minute close. So if you guys look at my chart, um, uh, that I posted there from the trader view upload. When you look at that chart, you can see the five minute bar closes under 1550. I wait for that close. I shorted there. I started there. Um, and it just proceeded to dump. So I took half off at, uh, when I was up about 50 or 60 cents, I believe what it was. And then I took, uh, I intended to take another half of my half off um at the $14 level but I accidentally covered everything which I guess that was the the market gods telling me that was the right decision to do <laughs> anyway but um covered into I I intended to cover into whole dollar numbers 
So half and whole dollars. So the 1450 level and then the 14 level and just cover along the way because I think Val mentioned that like 1393 or 1392 or something like that SSR was going to trigger. And it, I, to me, it, 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 it was, it was going to come too far at that point. So um, I don't remember what the prior close was on CLBS. It was 1493, about 1493. So, so this is what I did. I still left the calculator. So it's four, so 1493 times 90% from the SSR, it came out to that. So it never quite reached SSR yet. Nothing changed. Yep. And so this is what happened, guys. So Joe said in his option, uh, another word that you may hear often is a blow off top. So they call this the blow off top. Yep. And so it blew off twice, actually. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> 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 that was two blow offs. Um, it was here, but that's how you can make your money. So the closing price, let, let me see what the closing price for this is. So let's go back to the three day chart. Uh, it trapped a lot of times, man. Notice this. Oh, there we go, guys. The difference is this on Friday, it had a blow off top supposedly right it did the same thing but it never hit red the closing price was here guys the low was what here at the open it never hit red you see that it did not go red so that is the difference between today and friday friday had the same move it went down and it trapped you see that? it went all the way up but the, but it peaked at different times too guys it peaked at 10 30 where the zombie was supposed to be, right? And so it was like, yo, it during the zombie, it tanked down, and it worked its way up. So that's why we say, I don't want to mess anything during the zombie hours, even though it's a blow off, because you never know. But the easiest trade, once again, is if it went red, it did go red. And so you did the same thing. And then look what happened, guys. At 1030 on the dot was a low of day. It trapped again. The reason why, okay? This all hindsight, whatever it may be, you call it. There's so many bag holders, man, of shorts. Shorts are fucking trapped. And it does not unwind that easily, guys. This is not a small cap. This is not a small cap pig. This sucker is a mid cap. There's different rules, but then once again, the same rule applies at 1030. So great job, Joe, on doing that. Appreciate are you done? You want, to, you want to finish saying what? Um, nope, I was done. That's it. Awesome. Great job, Joe. I like this new format. But you see what happened, guys, at 10 freaking 30, man. If you do not respect this by now, you're going to blow your account up as a short seller. So how do you take advantage if you're along? It's very scary actually going along. This thing's under red. I wouldn't even touch it, dude. But if you do, if you do set a hard stop, Learn, learn this pattern. Learn this zombie rule pattern. You know, you, you, you may, all you need to do is if you wanted to just, just check this out at 1030 to see how it moves. This is the pivot line. Once it broke the pivot line for 1470, get into the long. You would have made money. 1480, get in at 1480, ride it up. So, but the key is just knowing these areas, knowing the time rules and all that helps you as a, Short bias trader as a long bias trader. Once again, 10, 30 on the dot. This, this stuff is just, I mean, I can't make this shit up, right? And so let's see where it topped up. It topped up, here's a 1650 line. Look, it's the same thing, line to line, man. 1550 was a major one. The broke 1550, boom, went all the way back up to 1650. So if you use those lines, the next line would be what? Like up here at 17. There we go. If you just shorted the 1650 line, you're in the money. Take the money and get the hell out if you want. Any, any questions, guys, on that? So we see an example of a zombie on a larger type of stock. Phenomenal, phenomenal trade, guys. Good job on that. Um, <laughs> I, I'm looking because I got... I got a fancy order field. I didn't even know I had an order out. <laughs> so well, I'll show you what I did right now. Um, let me finish it because I don't want people to copy these trades so that you may lose money. So don't, don't copy, just learn, guys. So let, let's start. Okay. So that was CLVS. What we learned was this. The first day red rule is the easiest trade for these type of stocks. Don't cherry pick the top. You're going to die. 
Learn the 1030 rule. Even though this is the first red day, it bounced off of the 1030 zombie rule. Always be recognizing those rules, man. Layering your risk parameters. Don't just think that it just you're in the money a dollar. This thing just went from 14 bucks to 1650, man. You're dead. Even if you're in a 1550, the last major support, like Joe said, you wrote it out to 14 and you did not take any money off, you're down. You just went from up a dollar fifty to down a dollar of share. How bad of a trader would that fuck your mind up? You're not a bad trader. You just got greedy. And how many times did we get greedy, guys? A lot. So you have to plan your trade. If you don't plan your trade, you're making shit on the fly, you would not cover. Why would you cover a 1450? Why would you cover any off of 15? Why would you take it off at 14 bucks? When you're in at 5, 1550, you would fucking have held that shit and watch it go up. And you know what? You would have added. I would tell you the mind of a trade trader now. This is something that I don't want anybody to do, guys. And this happens to me often when, when I was earlier in my career because I got very greedy. So what happens is this 1550 breaks because you're like, oh man, this might be the death day. This might be the death day. It's a blow off top. It's a blow off candle. And so you're like, oh shit, I knew it. I should have gotten 17. I knew it. And so you're like, I'm waiting, waiting for it goes at 17 bucks. It never goes back up. And you're like, should I hit it at 16? Uh, no, it's, it's stabilizing. Oh fuck, now 1550. You're like, fuck, I'm not gonna hit it. So you hit it at 15 bucks. And you're like, yes, 15 bucks. You made a dollar a share. And, but in your head, you're like, I wish, I wish, please go back up so I can add more. Because I was right, but I was so scared to enter any size. If it goes back up, I'm going to put all my account in because this is an easy trade. It's been up 10 days in a row. It went from $6 to 17 bucks. I'm an idiot not to go on it. So as it goes back up from $14 to 1450 to $14.70, you've already fucking entered most of your account in. And now you're at 15 bucks and you're like, oh fuck, it hit my average. I'm all in, I'm gonna use margin. 1550, fucking use margin. $16, I'm all fucking in. Please pray. 1650, I just stopped out. I went, I turned a winner into basically now I broke my fucking account, I blew up because you're greedy, you know? So plan your trade, set your orders and you don't have to do all of it. I put, I, put, I staggered the orders guys. Just so that when it hits there so quick, sometimes it's going boom, like this. It went boom. $14 was boom. You would never put it there in real time. It would never hit for you guys. You have to put it in some ahead of time. So I put it, I call those fantasy orders. They're fantasy entries and fantasy covers. But the point is I put them there to make myself not get greedy. How many times you fucking get greedy and get fucking blown? Everybody that fucking got greedy here started adding, adding, and adding at 1550. 1550. That is the miracle fucking area that I wanted, right? So that if I was in this fucking stock and I'm like, oh my God, it hit $14, please 1550. I'm gonna put all my account in. You fucking dead. 1550, 1650. That's the fuck it is. Why? That trade makes perfect sense, guys. But look at the time. Fucking zombie time, guys. They're able to do this when the volume is nothing. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.